Lincoln was last on top of its game over 50 years ago. And ever since then, the American automaker has been trying to channel its rich heritage with mixed results. After exploring different retro styles over the past two decades, Lincoln is finally once again committed to actual luxury, and it's banking on the all-new 2020 Aviator as the mainstay of its SUV lineup. But there are a lot of fantastic three-row luxury SUVs in the market today. So we're going to take a closer look and determine if the Aviator is worth serious consideration against the likes of the Audi Q7 and Infiniti QX60. The Aviator slots below the Navigator and above the compact MKC and its replacement, the Lincoln Corsair. There's a bit less alphabet soup in Lincoln's lineup these days, and that's a sign that it's trying to forge its own path in luxury cars, rather than trying to simply copy the imports. Lincoln takes a new approach to the upscale cabin too, which has a flowing design, soft touch materials, and selective use of bright work. The shifter buttons almost have a piano key design to them. In this sense, Lincoln provides hints of that golden age luxury without bending its whole design language around it. The Aviator has three rows, and that puts it technically in the same category as the Audi Q7, Infiniti QX60, Mercedes-Benz GLE, Land Rover Discovery, and the Cadillac XT6. Whether some of these vehicles actually get cross-shopped, I don't know. But I can tell you the competition is stiff. The optional second row captain's chairs are fantastic. And the third row is adequate for adults, but probably best suited for kids for any ride longer than 30 minutes. Drop the second and third rows and you've got 77 cubic feet of cargo space, which is on par with the Cadillac XT6. The front seats are comfy, but the seat controls are a bit complicated. This is something I've noticed in other new Lincoln models. I think it's an effort to bring back that old school notion of luxury, but it seems unnecessarily complex. Granted, the seats do have a massage function, so it's a pretty good trade-off. One thing I don't like is the button release for the doors on the inside and out. People have been looking around for the door release every time, and I can't help but wonder what happens when the battery dies. The Aviator has some really nice touches, like this massive panoramic moonroof that completely covers the first two rows. And heck, Lincoln even hired the Detroit Symphony Orchestra to record the jingles for the warning sounds. Was that necessary? Probably not, but it speaks to Lincoln trying to get holistic with its attempts to improve its vehicles. In 2020, a sharp design will get customers in the door, but I wonder if Lincoln believes it has a deeper understanding of what makes a quality vehicle that goes beyond brand reputation. The new Aviator's lineup includes five trims, Standard, Reserve, Grand Touring, Black Label, and Black Label Grand Touring. The Standard comes well equipped with three zone climate control, front and rear parking sensors, leather upholstery, and heated front seats. The Aviator also comes with a Sync 3 infotainment system and a 10.1 inch touchscreen, which I strongly prefer to the monolithic screen found in the new Ford Explorer, which shares a platform with this car. In the Explorer, that vertical orientation shrinks the screen for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but with this big landscape layout, those screens are bigger and easier to use. We're driving the Grand Touring trim. It comes with a massive moonroof I mentioned earlier, as well as everything from the standard and reserve trims, including the second row captain's chairs, 12-way front seats, and the Revel Premium audio system. A convenience package has a head-up display and a wireless charging pad. We'd still recommend the standard trim, since it offers so much content for the base price. The standard engine in the Aviator is a 400 horsepower turbocharged V6 while the Grand Touring comes standard with a plug-in hybrid powertrain featuring that engine plus a 100 horsepower electric motor, making a net 494 horsepower and 630 pound-feet of torque. Both setups send power through a 10-speed automatic transmission. The base V6 sends power to the rear wheels or available all-wheel drive, while the plug-in hybrid is an all-wheel drive setup. That electric power pays dividends in a couple of ways. For one, the stop-start system is actually smooth because the electric power covers the low-speed moments. Also, the hybrid powertrain provides a hush but confident ride that truly gives this car an upscale feel. The steering is light and the brakes provide a cushion feedback but stop on a dime. Now, one of the few other cars that I know that provides this kind of driving experience is the Rolls-Royce Cullinan. I'm not about to compare the two cars, but they're among the few modern cars that go for that soft refinement in driving dynamics. 
And if you do want to liven things up, the Aviator has an Excite Drive mode, which is a bit more dynamic, but it's still a 5,600 pound SUV and it can't fight physics. Fuel economy for the plug-in hybrid is 23 MPG combined. You factor in the electric only range of 21 miles and you've got a mile per gallon equivalent of 56 MPGe. For the conventional V6 fuel economy and a full trim breakdown, check out my written review. You can find a link to that in the description below. The Aviator comes with a full complement of driver assistance systems as part of Lincoln Copilot 360. It includes forward collision avoidance, lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control, and automatic high beams. Base MSRP for the 2020 Lincoln Aviator is $51,100. The range-topping Black Label Grand Touring starts at $87,800, which is a little absurd. Our Grand Touring test model has a starting price of $68,800, which is steep, but a bit more reasonable. After what seems like decades of fumbling around, Lincoln seems to have finally found its groove. The Aviator is far more than just a really nice Ford Explorer. It's a luxury three-row SUV unto itself, and finally gives Lincoln a true contender in a hotly competitive segment. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to see more videos, like our review on the new Ford Explorer. If you think you'd consider the Aviator against the likes of the Acura MDX, let us know in the comments. And to read my full review on the 2020 Lincoln Aviator, go to cargurus.com.